As you may know, deploying Linux systems and applications on embedded processors has traditionally been an error-prone and time-consuming effort. Furthermore, cold starting servers from original distribution media can be a tedious procedure. Given the limited availability of tools, engineers and systems administrators are inclined to internally develop ad hoc methods. In addition to the base installation media, full feature distributions often require updates, development tools, board support packages, drivers, and a variety of applications. In this video, we demonstrate Red Hawk Architect, an exciting new development tool with an intuitive, easy to use GUI interface to configure, build, and deploy Red Hawk Linux from over 2,500 software packages. Red Hawk Architect ingests, manages, and configures selected packages from various distribution media and creates a unified system image ready for deployment. Hello and welcome to this presentation and demonstration of Red Hawk Architect. I am Michael Duvall. My background in real-time computing spans over 30 years in both hardware and software, including some 15 years experience with Linux. For the past 11 years, I have been with Concurrent Computer Corporation, working as a systems analyst located in Pompano Beach, Florida. There are five general steps you take to create the deployable image. The first step is to select which software packages are required from the Red Hat distribution, the desired Red Hawk kernels, and optional Nightstar tools as needed. Once these packages have been designated, one then configures the system for things such as run level, root password, time zone, serial console setup if required, network configuration, and the target file system layout. The next step is to build the configuration as specified in the previous two steps. During this phase, Red Hawk Architect collects the appropriate RPMs and constructs the target file system. At this stage, a number of features are available for you to customize the target image, including updating to the latest packages, kernel configuration that can include configuring and compiling a custom kernel or modules, adding additional RPMs of your choice to the target file system, a file manager feature that allows you to move individual files from the host file system to the target image, a terminal shell that allows you to manually customize the target image, and a cleanup feature that helps reduce the size of the target image by removing extraneous files. Deploying your final operating system environment can be done in a variety of ways. USB devices can be directly flashed with the system image. This includes USB drives and compact flash. These devices can then be inserted into a target board and the board will boot the image upon restart. Optionally, an installer can be created that will boot on the target and install the root file system onto the target's board local media from either a USB drive or a DVD. Using PXE boot support, Red Hawk Architect can also deploy the system image over the network to be installed on the target board's local media. Local media can either be traditional disk drive or embedded flash devices. Finally, Red Hawk Architect can be used to deploy the system image via NFS for full diskless booting. Let's now take a tour of using Red Hawk Architect to create a fully deployable Linux installation. As you can see, Architect presents an easy to follow GUI interface. On the left, the user is presented with a toolbox for a step-by-step -step menu from software selection through deployment. Across the top, you see a gauge that shows an estimated size of your target image. We initially start with the base distribution. That is further arranged by categories and groups. Depending on your project requirements, you can select specific groups as shown here in the tabs. Within the groups, 
The lower portion of the screen identifies the specific RPM packages for each. Red Hawk Architect pre-selects the minimum number of packages required to build a functional system. Red Hawk Architect is dependency aware and will include any additional RPMs needed based on what you selected for the target system. For our example today, we will not add any selections and move on to Red Hawk specific packages. As you can see, the Red Hawk trace kernel is pre-selected. In the interest of creating a minimal footprint, we will only select the standard kernel and deselect all other pre-selected core packages. Note that the size of the image is now under 1 gigabyte. Red Hawk Architect attempts to be as flexible as possible, allowing you to install the Nightstar tools specifically required by your project. You can either run the Nightstar tools self-hosted on the deployed system or install only the specific servers needed for remote debugging and analysis. The next step is to set up some basic configurations prior to building the image. In this section, you are first presented with general settings for the deployed system. Time zone with or without universal time code, the root password, and the run level that the deployed system will start. For this demonstration, we will take the defaults and move on to the console settings. If you are targeting an embedded device that has no traditional monitor, keyboard, or mouse as an operator's console, it may be required that you need to configure a serial console. If that is the case, you can enable the appropriate serial port and specify its baud rate on this screen. For configuring the network, you have the ability to configure each individual network to be enabled or disabled on boot, and whether it will use DHCP or static IP addressing. In the middle of the screen, you can specify that the deployed system will either use a fixed host name or be dynamically assigned by your DHCP server. Furthermore, miscellaneous settings allow you to manually specify the gateway, the DNS domains, and servers if required. Again, we will not make any changes here and move on to the final configuration settings. This screen is used to define the target file system devices. It provides for both simple and advanced disk partitioning. Here with the simple disk partitioning options, you identify the root file system disk device. The pull-down allows you to specify ext2 through ext4 file system types. Using the no a time and bind mount options will reduce the number of writes to the device. The mount read only selection will maximize the lifespan since the device will never be written to during normal use. Here, with advanced disk partitioning, you are offered more flexibility for the layout of the file systems, as well as the ability to add additional disks and file system options. Now that we have selected the software to be installed and configured the image, it's now time to build it. Here the ISOs have previously been imported. This significantly reduces the time required and alleviates you from changing media each time a new image is built. For this demonstration, I will change the target directory to slash temp and enter demo for the image name. The build process will then collect all the selections and entries as previously specified and build the target image.
Here we've used a bit of video magic to show you what you get at the end of the process. We can now move on to customizing the image. From the base distribution, it's always a good idea to make sure your packages are updated to the current release, and that's what we'll do here. Again, some video magic quickly gets us through this process. Notice that applying the updates has pushed us beyond the one gigabyte target image size. We will address that in a few moments. The kernel manager screen lets you select which kernel will be booted on the deployed system. If the kernel source was installed on your system, you will have the ability to configure and compile a custom kernel specifically tailored to your requirements. Since the source code was not selected to be included previously, these features are not relevant now. To provide flexibility and utility, Red Hawk Architect provides an easy-to-use screen so that you can add additional RPMs to the target image. This can include packaged BSPs, drivers, applications, and so forth. To use this feature, merely navigate to the RPM and click Install. We'll skip this step for our presentation today. Sometimes you may just need to move a few files into the target image. The file manager is the right tool. Merely navigate to the files in question and copy each to the desired image location. The change root shell is your ultimate tool for customizing the target image, but first I will use the image cleanup screen to initially reduce the size of the target image. Since many RPMs include documentation, we use this screen to rid the target image of unneeded and unnecessary files. Here we select all of the types and click Remove. Notice that the image size has been reduced. Removing the RPM database will help more, but not quite enough to go below the 1 gigabyte target image size. The change root shell places you directly in the target image. And for this demonstration, we clean up unnecessary kernels and their modules. Notice now that the image size is well below the 1 gigabyte target size. Our final step now is to deploy the image. The target image we have created is now available for deployment. Notice that there are a number of methods available. We can create a bootable USB device, a virtual machine disk image, a DVD, USB, or Pixie network installer, or a network bootable diskless system. For our example, we will install the image on a USB thumb drive. Here is a short video showing the boot sequence. I hope this video has provided you with useful information. If you would like to know more about Red Hawk Architect or other products and services offered by Concurrent, please feel free to contact us at info at real-time.ccur.com, call us at 954-974-1700, or look for us on the web at real-time.ccur.com. Thank you. This video was proudly produced using open source software applications running on Red Hawk Linux.